Is there a micro robot in your future? I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Dr. Paul McEwen, Professor of Physics, Director of the Kavli Institute for Nanoscale Science at Cornell and co-founder of OIC Technologies. Welcome, Dr. McEwen. It's great to be here. Give us a brief summary of your professional background, please. Sure. I, I grew up in a small town in, in, in Oklahoma and then went to the University of Oklahoma as an engineering physics major. And then I went off to graduate school at Yale, followed by a postdoc at MIT. And uh, then I was a professor of physics at UC Berkeley before moving to the hinterlands uh, of upstate New York uh, at Cornell, where I've been working for the last 20 years to make things smaller and smaller. When we talk about micro robots, uh, just how micro are they? Uh, so we, we like the word these days, microscopic robots. The kind of robots we want to make are so small that you basically can't see them with the naked eye. Maybe they'd look like a little tiny speck, but you can't resolve any aspects of them. It's the same kind of microscopic world that was unveiled when uh, people like Robert Hooke uh, first looked under microscopes and discovered a world of microorganisms. We're trying to build robots at that size. Tell us about OX. So OX, uh, OX stands for Optical Wireless Integrated Circuit, and it's just a part of a micro robot. And OIC is basically the brain of a micro robot. And uh, it's a little integrated circuit made using the same kinds of technology that's sitting inside of your computer, only it's just a little tiny piece of one that's about the, the, the you know, again, the size of something that's in the absolute resolution of the human eye. And the optical wireless part means to talk to something that small, uh, we shoot a laser at it, to power it, and then it blinks information back at us with a little tiny light emitting diode. How do you make the OIX actuators? So the, the OIX itself is just like a, again, it's like a brain. It just sits there and can think and communicate. But uh, the part that was, that really was uh, the main aspect of the work we've been doing lately is learning how to build legs on that robot. So the OIC was like, if I hold this little robot up here, the OIC is the body of the robot. And, and basically the people in the semiconductor industry have known how to build those things for, for decades. now. Uh, but what we don't have are little tiny legs that are like these legs only say reduced down by a factor of a thousand or even a hundred thousand times smaller. So our work has been learning how to make tiny legs and then attaching them to little brains to make tiny robots. Are micro robots doing any jobs for us today? And what might they do for us in the future? Uh, right now, the kind of microscopic robots that we're talking about aren't doing any jobs for anybody because they are basically just now starting to emerge out of the laboratory. Um, what are we going to do with them going forward? I, I honestly don't know. Uh, we are driven by the curiosity, can I build this little thing more than any specific application? But you know, if you push me uh, and you ask me what I would like to dream about, uh, Let's say going, uh, one of these robots that we will build that's been shrunk down to basically about the size of a cell. So imagine going to, for example, treat cancer or something like that, where you could release these little robots near the cancer and it could go into an individual cell and say, are you a good cell or a bad cell? And if you're a bad cell, it'll take you out. If it's a good cell, it, it moves on to the next cell. Uh, I mean, that's total science fiction at, that, at this point, but it's not, you know, the, the laws of physics don't tell you it can't be done. So we'd like to figure out if we can do it. Where are the hotbeds of micro robot research and who are our peers in this work? So uh, our group here at Cornell University is, is certainly one of the leaders. Um, there are a lot of groups working at sort of slightly larger scales, like millimeter scales at say Harvard, they have the RoboBee project to make something about the size of a bee that can fly. Uh, there are research groups in Europe in particular that are pushing this very hard trying to make little tiny devices that could be used for microsurgery or what have you. But it's still all pretty much in the laboratory. What are the technical obstacles that must be overcome to achieve the applications that you envision? Yeah, as I mentioned, the, the electronics is the easy part, the brains of the robot. Uh, we know how to make those using standard semiconductor techniques. But figuring out how to make a leg, something that can bend and, and do its job is, is not easy. And you know, a leg, if you look at a robot's leg, it has little hinges, it has little uh, uh, pivots that go, and th those are very hard to build at the micro scale. Um, so what we've done, at least in my group, is we've, we've used basically the techniques of origami. Uh, origami artists know how to take a planar thing like a sheet of paper and make it into something cool that will do funny things when you bend it. 
Uh, so we've used this kind of approach where we take a sheet of paper or what amounts to paper, but it's really only a few atoms thick, and then find ways to bend it to make the robot uh, do its robotic motion. So we're, we're sort of halfway between origami art, semiconductor fabrication, and robotics. Where can we find uh, the paper that you published on this topic? So it's going to be published very soon in Nature magazine, the one that, uh, that first reports these little tiny robots. But you can also, for example, there's a TED talk given by myself and, and one of my colleagues, Mark Miskin, that talks both about the little OX, but then also about the tiny robots. So Google my name and TED and you'll get it. And thanks again for joining us, Paul. Dr. Paul McEwen, Professor of Physics, Director of the Kavli Institute for Nanoscale Science at Cornell and co-founder of OIC Technologies. If someone wants to connect with you, how can they do that? Uh, the simplest thing is just to email me at uh, pmcewen at gmail.com, or uh, you can also go to my group's website. If you Google my name, you'll get right to it. Thanks again. And find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.